an essential part of any road trip is of course your car and with most of us flying into cities these days you're going to need to rent some wheels ever since we made our california road trip video our most asked questions are how did you rent the convertible and do you have any tips for hiring a car well for the convertible we simply found the cheapest normal car and clicked on open tops so we had the same deal as for our top tips well that's going to need a whole video and keep watching because we've also found a way to rent a car for half the normal price whoa 730 dollars this is nuts we love traveling for less but enjoy giving away our secrets just as much before we book anything, let's do a quick fire car rental Q&A to see if we can save you even more cash really quickly. Book as early as you can. Don't wait until the week before your trip or anything like that. Do it as soon as you book the plane tickets if you can, okay? It's always gonna be cheaper to book earlier. Yes and no. No, because it's included in so many prices these days, but yes, if you want peace of mind, plus it will open up another hack for you. Yes, bonus hack unlocked. Hmm, funny how that question was more of a tip. It's almost as though I write the questions myself. Yep, totally check your car rental price a few weeks before you travel. That way you can see if the price has come down, cancel for free, and then suddenly you'll have a bit of extra spending money which you can put to more important things on the trip. Nope, most airlines will actually let you check them as baggage on the flight for free. So why throw your money away? Yeah, sure, it is a bit more hassle when you're getting everything checked and when you're actually at baggage reclaim, but it's totally worth it for the money you'll save. I've actually got a hack for when you're traveling with loads of luggage and kids and need to pick up a rental car. So instead of you all getting a shuttle bus with all the luggage and all the baby carriers and all the things that you've got, leave everyone with your other half and you go solo to go pick up the car, okay? That way everyone can sit, they can get a coffee, get some snacks and you can just chill while you get the shuttle bus by yourself. When you've picked up the car, simply phone ahead and glide into the arrivals to pick up the kids with no hassle at all. Yes, it is always cheaper to get something away from the airport, but is it really worth the hassle for the money that you actually have to pay to do it? If you haven't got kids, you may want to try it, but we found that when we've done it before, you actually lose a bit of the day of the holiday by actually going to pick up the car and everything. So for us, it's not really worth the hassle. Yes, sometimes, and no. Yes, it always will be cheaper to pick up and drop off from the same location, but if you're traveling to major cities, you'll find that the cost isn't really that much either. So if you're traveling down Highway 1 from San Francisco to San Diego, you'll probably find it hasn't gone up too much. Plus, it would cost way more to have to drive it all the way back up to San Francisco, and what a waste of time. So sometimes, just suck it up and pay it. They're essential these days, aren't they? But you have them on your phone. So why pay $5 a day or five pounds a day to hire one? Take your charger, take your holder from home and use that in the car. And quite often they have CarPlay and Apple Pay and all those kind of things. So it's actually even better and you don't actually have to look on your phone for it. It will zoom up to a big screen for you. So way better than that. Brits, if you're worried about getting stung by roaming fees internationally, don't worry. Three have a great SIM card which lets you take it over to 70 different countries and it mirrors your plan that you've got in the UK. So you can actually use it for pretty much free. So that's my top tip for that one. Not sponsored, just saying. Maybe if you want to share the driving. This is one of those perks that's actually given for free by a lot of car rental places nowadays. Alicia's not really bothered about driving when we're out in the States, so if it's free, I'll add her. If it's not, we don't worry. But if you do want to share the driving, check two quotes and see which one comes out the best price and if it's worth it.
Americans coming to the UK, I would say yes, because you've got a lot to contend with. You've got the wrong side of the road, you've got roundabouts, you've got lots of passing. The last thing you need is a stick shift to have to deal with as well. Brits coming to the States, don't pay extra. Automatic is always included as standard. Unlimited mileage is becoming more and more popular these days and quite often you get it for free. Sometimes there might be a standard amount of miles like 3,000 miles that you get and it might be a bit cheaper to do that. One time I was actually wondering whether it was worth taking the cheaper option for 3,000 miles or wherever it was and I actually Google mapped out our trips and realised actually we weren't going to go over that so it was fine to book and get the cheaper option. Um, so something to watch out for but yeah quite often it's included. Just always check what the deal is before hitting book. Why would you pay their price for fuel when there's loads of gas stations around airports? Don't book it. Yes, it's all great evidence in case something happens or didn't happen. So take photos of any bumps or any scratches for peace of mind. Plus, I always take photos of the car anyway for simple reasons like I can find the number plate or the registration plate really quickly in a big car park um, or at Disneyland or all those kind of things where all the cars are pretty much the same. And also take a photo of your odometer inside the car and that way you can see if anyone's tried to add any miles on at the end of the trip as well. Right, quick fire round over. I think we know what we're looking for now. So let's have a go at booking something together. Now, what I'm gonna do is for the American audience, give it to you in dollars and from their websites. And from the UK audience who I think will like this video too, I'm gonna do it on the UK versions of websites, okay? So stick with me. I think I can do this in a nice kind of simple way. So let's get cracking. Okay, so first of all, let's get a base rate to start off with, shall we? This is what you'd pay if you were lazy and went to Expedia without going anywhere else, okay? I'm gonna choose the same dates for everything we look at. So 1st of August to the 15th, a two week trip. I'm gonna pick up in San Francisco and drop off in San Diego. I'm gonna base everything on a Toyota Corolla, which is a kind of a good mid-sized car, but not in that premium bracket. So more of you can go for it. I'm also going to add collision protection to the American prices so it's a fair comparison with the other sites that we come to, okay. So our starting price is $1,327 on the US page. Now over on the UK's Expedia page we're starting at £807, which is $1,100 roughly, so cheaper in the UK version. Now the extra insurance is given as part of the deal here on the UK one, so nothing extra to add on at all, so we're doing better already. Now let's see how much we can save by searching together. So first up, let's start with rentalcars.com. They're usually really competitive. Ah, oh, 1,237 on the USA website, that's more than Expedia. Oh, um, okay. Let's go to the UK login. Yeah, it's 704 pounds which is $965. Yeah, much cheaper to buy it in the UK. Right, I'm not gonna be beaten on that USA price quite yet. Let's keep going. Let's check out economybookings.com for the same trip. US website first, it's coming out at $1,209 and they include full coverage for their insurance, which is good. Although you can make it even cheaper if you have your own insurance, which might cover it. So that's $118 cheaper than Expedia, good. Brits, okay, right, now your turn on economybookings.com. Ah, it's more expensive for the Corolla. No problem. But look at this. It's even cheaper for me today to get a Jeep Compass for £594. That's $815 for two weeks. A Jeep Cherokee is £603. That's $827. And look at this, a really good seven-seater Ford Explorer is £682, that's $936. There must be some deal on with Europe Car at the moment, so make sure you grab deals like this when you see them. That is awesome. I would definitely be upgrading from that Corolla to the Jeep at this point. Now we know our best deals are from economybookings.com. In the UK, it's through Europe Car, and from the US, it's from Fox Rent-A-Car. Let's do another check to see if I can bring the price down even more. So I always try to go directly to the rental companies to see if we can get it any cheaper without going through that middleman. So let's go to Fox Rent-A-Car first. 
So $1,237, it's gone up actually through them. Uh, and this is with the extra insurance, remember, so it'll cost even more if you went through Fox directly. So that's, that's not good. Let's click on their city specials too. They always usually have deals going on at some point. There we go, 1,177 or 1,120 if I pay up front. But as I said, this is without any insurance. So you'd need to add the loss damage waiver and supplemental liability insurance potentially to match the others. And it's gone up to $1,500, so way more. You could always sign up for their email newsletter as that normally gets you some money off too. But I think we're gonna go back to economy bookings for this one for that. Now it's the UK's turn. Let's see if it's any cheaper to go through Europe card directly. Whoa, now the Corolla's come up at 532 pounds, which is $730. That is crazy. What does it include though? Okay, it has an extra driver and nearly all insurances apart from the supplementary liability. Uh, the Jeep Compass is more expensive from them directly, but we know where to go if we want that car. So the Corolla is back to being the cheapest again. Let me be cheeky and see how much it is through the American Europe car website and see it that way. Whoa, $730. And that includes collision damage waiver too. This is nuts. And if I include the personal accident cover, it's still under $800. I'm a bit in shock. I wasn't expecting that to work so well at all. It really does go to show how important it is that you do some searches and maneuver around if you've got the time to do it, doesn't it? Maybe the hack is to see where it's cheapest in the UK and then book it through an American one at that point. I don't know. Um, just so you know, this isn't a sponsored post at all. Europe Car have nothing to do with this. This is just pure luck. That is crazy. So let's compare our starting price to our best deal, shall we? We began on Expedia USA, who were offering a Toyota Corolla for two weeks for $1,327. With some searching, we got the same deal for $730. That's nearly half. From Expedia UK, we started off at £807, which isn't awful, but we got it down to £532, which is a third off result. That is amazing, I'm impressed. I didn't think I was gonna do that well. I thought it might take a few hundred dollars off, but not that much. Now, before we hit book, three more curveballs just to help you out a bit more with your booking. First up, check to see if you can unlock special deals through your store cards, loyalty cards, credit cards, or air miles. Even if exactly the same price as elsewhere, you're likely to earn points on top. Curveball two, for some reason, 6T is really competitive for long deal rentals. Here are the deals for the two weeks we've been putting in so far. So the Toyota Camry is the most similar. It's £1,232 for two weeks, which isn't great. If I put it in for six weeks though, it's only 1,379. That's not bad, is it? On the American site, it's 1,700 for two weeks, but again, just 200 bucks more for six weeks. They don't include insurance for US residents, so on a long rental, the fees can go sky high. I'll make a video about that if I can to help. Curveball three, is there a cashback website you can go through before you book? In the UK, I use Top Cashback and have saved hundreds over the years. I think in the USA, the most popular version is called shopathome.com. Well, putting my cheapest quote through Top Cashback would give me 10% back, which would mean I'd pay a total of 479 pounds once they paid me back. Shop at home is only a 3% discount, but hey, that's not bad. Also, the Honey Browser extension is always good for promo codes, so why not see if you can bring the price down through that too. Well, we've saved hundreds today, haven't we? I'm a bit shocked at how much we actually saved in the end, but it does go to show, don't be lazy with your searching for car rental prices. Deals are out there, okay? Also, we know what came out on top today, but it's never the same. If we did exactly the same searches tomorrow or the next week, it would come out completely different. So make sure you check those big comparison sites first before you delve deeper and do a few more searches, okay? I'll leave a few links for you below. Just because Europe Car won today doesn't mean it will next time. Don't forget, if you've got free cancellation, make sure you check the price again a few weeks before your trip to see if you can cancel it and get it for an even cheaper price that way too. Now, what rental car insurance do we need for our trip? It's gonna need another video, isn't it? Also, click down here to find out our top tips for driving in the USA. For example, did you know you can go on red light? We hope this video helps you live the life of Riley for less. 
Let us know how you get on it in the comments below. See you next time.